What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be keeping it short and sweet. Let you know how I travelled in round 11. Just a little sneak peek guys, it was a pretty huge round. So let's jump straight into the video. guys so we're gonna jump into the laptop today I'm gonna actually show you what my side looked like what players scored what last week so we'll start off in defense with some of my positives some of my negatives for the round in all honesty there weren't many negatives for me but defense Sam Doherty 82 little bit unders um, but is, is serviceable the rest of my defense Fantastic. Jaden Short, especially. Oleg Markov. Those were the two that really stood out for me this week. Really performed above what I was expecting. It was nice to see Jaden Short put up a 100 plus score as he's been struggling around that 75 mark um, up to low 90s. He does also have a, a decent matchup this weekend too. So hopefully he can push on with it. I still don't think he's really close to a top six defender, but he's been serviceable. Going into the midfield, pretty much all standouts except Tom Mitchell. Really disappointed with 76, but these premiums do have off games as well. I still think he's a top eight midfielder. I expect him to bounce back post buys, so there's nothing really there to be too concerned about. Devin Robertson, loopholed him off the bench, as you can see, for 79 points. That was a fantastic score from a rookie, so super stoked with his output too. In the rucks, Riley O'Brien. Up against Nankervis, I was a little bit worried that he'd put in a poor one again. He has been very disappointing this year, but Nank getting injured early helped his cause. He did get to 97 and he will be rucking against Collingwood this week without Brody Grundy as well. So he should be good again. And he has now come up against all the tough ruck opponents. So he does have easy run from here on out. And I expect his output to improve quite significantly. If we scroll down now to my forward line, Josh Kelly. He's been fantastic since I brought him in. I'll just get his stats up quickly for you guys. So if we have a look at his last few games. 121, 105, 115, 110, 108. That gives him a five game average of 111, which is fantastic. He's clearly the number one forward at this current stage. And he's a must target for those that don't have him post the round 12 buy. He's playing inside mid now. I traded him in in round 9, I believe. Possibly round 8, but I think it was round 9. So he's been fantastic for me since bringing him into my side. If we have a look at the rest of my forwards, Nick Hind was a little bit down, but that was expected in the wet weather in the West. Hunter is a bloke that I traded in this week, so I'll talk about him in a little bit, but 93, serviceable, his role was decent, he did start on the wing and play majority on the wing in the first half, but Bulldogs having to activate their sub, they brought on Lewis Butler, who then sort of took that wing role and Hunter played a lot more forward in the second half, I think this was just due to them having a substitute that was suited for that role and therefore Hunter got pushed out. But I don't think that's too much to worry about there. Hunter back on the wing this week against Frio. He should be pretty big. Phillips started off great but finished on 76, which just seems to be 
the type of player he is. He's one that you can definitely move on this week. Um, he has the buy, so now's a perfect time to get rid of him. I'd love to get rid of him, but I think that I'll be holding him probably throughout the whole of the buys. It's not ideal, but I think that's just what I'm going to have to do with my situation. And I'll be looking to trade him in round 15 to Gorn or Grundy, potentially. So Isaac Heaney, next up, biggest plus three of the round, this bloke. I traded him in two weeks ago. I paid 481k. I just thought he was priced too low, so I took the punt. Despite the poor injury history and the fact he's had a few injuries that he's managing at the moment. But 84 first up and then rewarded me with 135 this week was absolutely fucking huge. So super stoked with him. And then my poorest scorer of the round, Orazio Fantasia. I wasn't expecting much. He did get to 56. It was looking like he was going to finish on about 40. So... I can't complain too much here, but he now has gone under surgery too, so he'll be a must trade for me this week. If we touch on my score for the week quickly, I scored 2,319, which is bloody huge. Had me ranked 26th for the round. Um, the trades that I pulled off this week, if you guys have been following me now for a while, you know how I like to trade. You know what principles I follow. I'm a big advocate for the one down, one up approach. A lot of guys were getting on Burns and Poulter this week. And whilst I did recommend them as great options, their price tag quite high meant that I wasn't going to be able to get the upgrade I wanted. So as I've said, over and over, I decided to bank on a cheaper rookie so I could get that cash to get another premium and in particular the premium I wanted. So I went with Bianco instead of those two guys, saved a bunch of cash and then put that cash on top of Chad Warner which then got me to Lockie Hunter who I think is a top six forward and is a great price to buy. That trade netted me 41 points on field. So that's why I trade that way, guys. If you got Burns or Poulter, also a great move, but you want to be making sure that you can get the premium you want. So in saying all of this, where am I currently ranked? That's the big question you guys want to know. I'm currently sitting at 224, so I'm in a great position. My team is in a great position despite Grundy going down injured. That's something that I will be talking about in an upcoming video. But for the most part, I'm pretty confident. I've got my trade strategy mapped out for the next few weeks in terms of who I'm looking to bring in, who I'm looking to move on, and what that's going to make my side look like across the buyers. So that's how I went this week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how you're looking for the buyers, what types of players you're looking to target, all that good fantasy stuff. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the back field. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy.